Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Hacktivity by Occult. The game plays one to four players, takes roughly about 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Hacktivity, you are going to be playing as a hacker, going into cyberspace and defeating anomalies. These things are trying to destroy your system, and you are going to be attempting to get in there, hack them, and deactivate them if possible. There's many ways to lose this cooperative board game, and only one way to win. You have to get rid of all of the cards in your hand, as well as that deck there. And if you can do that, you'll win. However, you can lose if uh, the alerts raise too high, or if uh, you die. You can lose your firewall access, and if you get down to zero, that's going to be the end of the game. And then another way you can lose is on this other track over here, if it goes all the way down to the white cube, in which case you're out as well. In the game, it's pretty simple. You'll be drawing cards based on a certain number from either your deck or from the virus deck, or actually the malware, whatever you want to call it, the anomalies, and you will then be able to play them. You'll each have a certain number of rounds you're going to go through based on the number of cards you're going to play from your turn, one or two. You place anomalies in the anomaly area or discard them. You'll play your cards, either the top version or the bottom version, into your area of the board, and you'll perform the actions, and you'll try and deactivate the anomalies and push forward. And that's the basic idea of the game. Will you be able to deactivate all the anomalies? before all the cards in your deck run out or you die or one of these two different things happen to you or it gets too much to bear. Find out in the game. We'll talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and then of course my review of the game, Hacktivity. Okay, so let's start by explaining how the game is set up. The first thing you'll do is put the main board together and you're going to have three portions of the board. The alert interface, the antivirus interface, and over here is the critical interface. On the alert side, you're gonna put a number of yellow cubes based on the number of players in their suggested spots in the setup. For the first base game, you're gonna set them all in the A, B, C, D, E, F, G areas of one and you're gonna use all the cubes. Then you're gonna go over to the antivirus area and you're gonna place a number of antiviruses based, or I should say the anomalies, based on the number of players in the game and of course the difficulty and scenario. In this case, we have one of them that's gonna be set to one and the rest of them are gonna be empty, set to zero. If you're playing with, I believe, a one or a two player game, you're going to include an anomaly that basically blocks a space. Over here in the critical interface, you're going to add the scenario card. You're going to set up the marker for how many cards that will be drawn, and in this case, it'll be three. And then you're going to set uh, your alert status, which is going to be, or your critical status, which is going to be starting at four, and uh, the final point is going to be 20, but that will also change as well. And then, of course, you have the two different decks here. Over here, you have the alert deck based on the number of players. You're going to be adding these cards here to it. And then over here in the critical phase, uh, critical interface, you're going to include all the different anomalies, and you'll shuffle them up. In a four-player game, you add the A's one, two, three, and four. In a three-player game, it's one, two, and three. I think you get the picture. Each player is also then going to be able to select a character, and each character is going to come with their own unique character deck, and based on the scenario, we'll include new or extra scenario cards. Uh, you're going to take that deck and you'll shuffle it up and place it down next to you. You'll also have an up and a down discard area card, and you'll place those down right next to your character card, along with your player reference card, and your firewall, which will be originally set to three in the basic game and every single player will get to do this. Now, there are a couple characters that are unique to this. Uh, there's going to be Cyberlink, which will include these little nodes here that they can utilize from their deck. And then you have over there Dr. Power, and Dr. Power is going to have its own unique board as well. Well, they'll be setting black cubes and a, and a blue cube uh, that will kind of let them engage their cards in certain ways. After that, you'll set aside any additional cards for the additional scenarios aside, and you're ready to begin the game. I only have a prototype copy of this game, so it only included the first two scenarios and the base mode setting for the game. Uh, and there's going to be multiple different scenarios with additional cards that are going to be included. But right now, I just have the extra additional cards for the extra scenario, which will include new cards to your character deck, as well as the anomaly deck, and some other little interesting things that can pop up. But I'm just going to talk about how the game is played in the base setup and, and, and that kind of a thing. And how it works is pretty simple. Each player is going to be taking turns. Before we do that, let's talk about turn order. Cyberlink will go first, then Dr. Power, then Blast, and then uh, Artemis. And the way that works is there's a number on the card. This is 0, 1, 0, 2, so on and so forth. So it already dictates the player order. Once you got the player order and everything's set up, then you're going to be able to draw cards based on the number represented here on this little lifeline track. And it's going to be three for the base mode of the game. When you draw cards, you can either draw them from your character deck 
or from the anomaly deck. And you can choose any number of cards equal to three. Uh, so I can draw one card from my character deck, and I can draw two from the anomaly deck, or I can draw two from my character deck and one from the anomaly deck, or all three from one or the other. Once you draw these cards, you don't look at them. You actually take them and you set them face down in front of you, and that is going to end your portion of the draw. And the next player is going to get a chance to go. Dr. Power can then go ahead and draw his cards along with some anomaly cards. And then, of course, Blast is going to go ahead and do the same thing. And finally, Artemis will go ahead and do the same thing. And as you can see, they've all got their hand of three cards, in which case, after everyone has their cards, they can then take them and start looking at them. Now, they can't tell them tell people exactly what's in their hand, but they can kind of give an idea, like a range, or I can do this kind of a thing or that kind of a thing pretty well, not so well. So it has kind of this, like, the mind feel in a, in, in a way in which you're going to be placing down cards. Uh, and uh, then, of course, uh, Cyberlink is going to start the game off. And on your turn, you can play up to two cards. One is the minimum, and two is the maximum. So if I want, I can go ahead and play an anomaly. When you play an anomaly, you can either choose to play it face up in this anomaly area in which you can try and deactivate them, or you can place it face up in the discard pile. Now, there's a cost to doing that. Uh, the first thing is if you're placing it in the anomaly area, you're going to increase its HP uh, by one, two, three, uh, based on the little circle in the middle left-hand corner. And uh, that is going to need to be deactivated by defeating it with your cards. However, if you choose, you can go ahead and discard it instead. And if you do, there is a cost to discarding it. In this case here, it says two damage. So if I put this in the discard pile, my character would take two damage. And remember, if you ever get to zero, everyone loses the game. And then, of course, she can choose to play another card, or she can pass. In which case, it would go to the next player, it could go to Dr. Power. And Dr. Power now has the options to play cards as well. Like, for instance, uh, Dr. Power might want to play one of uh, his cards. And we will play that card there. It does one damage. And when you play your cards, it'll either be played on the top or the bottom discard. If you're playing it for its top ability, it goes in the top uh, area. If you play on the bottom area, it goes in the bottom discard. And in which case he's playing the top, it's going to do a damage to one target. And we'll go ahead and kill this alpha anomaly, putting it to zero. And this card will go into the discard pile. And of course, he can choose to play an anomaly. Play one out. It's got five HP. It'll move its tracker to five. And because he didn't discard it, the discard effect does not take place. He played his two cards, and it will pass. And the next player will do the same thing. Play a card or play two cards and pass. Play a card or play two cards and then pass. And then another round will start. And it'll keep going until no players have any cards in their hand. If you have no cards in your hand, you're done. Otherwise, you keep playing until everybody's gone to zero. Once everyone's gone to zero, then once again, you'll start the round by drawing up to three cards, um, or exactly three cards from either of the two different decks. And you'll progress until this deck runs out and you win the game or <laughs> one of the many different ways you lose the game happens. Now let's talk about some of the boards and how they work. Some of the cards in the game are going to tell you uh, to move this tracker up, this uh, alert tracker. If it ever reaches, each, each cube is going to start from left to right, so you'll start with the farthest left one, it'll move all the way up to seven. If it goes to eight, it gets removed, and one of these cards from this deck here gets added to the middle of the anomaly deck. So basically more anomalies to deal with. And if uh, you have one that kind of gives you more than the required amount. So if it's at seven and you have to go up plus two, this will go to eight, a card will get added, and then the next leftmost uh, token will move up one space. And if all of these yellow cubes go all the way to the top of this board here, the game will end and not in your favor. The anomaly board is pretty simple. It's just four different spaces where you can place anomalies. You'll put their HP marker down, and then you'll be able to deal damage to them. There's some effects uh, in cards that will let you do one damage to one, or two damage to one, and one damage to another, or you can spread the damage out. And you're just basically trying to reduce all of their HP to zero. When they go to zero, they get put into the discard pile and allow for more anomalies to be deactivated. If there's no space for anomalies, you must discard them and, them and suffer the effects. And then over here, this is the critical area. Basically, uh, based on this little token here, the, the red one determines how many cards you'll be drawing. Like I said, it's normally going to be three for the first base game. But it also has another track, and this track indicates what happens, uh, losing the game when you hit that white space. And you start with four. So if you ever have to deal with one of those red square icons, you'll move up on this track based on that number. So if it's plus three. But there's also a blue icon that will let you go ahead and reduce it by a certain number as well. 
In the base mode of the game, your objective is to get not only this deck removed, but additionally you want to get this tracker to zero or less. <laughs> so you'll be able to additionally do certain things with your icons. Now normally there's an attack icon and you can attack the anomalies or you can attack this, this board here, making it be reduced with your attack. And then there's symbols that are specific to each one as well. And that's pretty much the basis of the game. You're going to be taking your actions, you're going to be emptying your hand, drawing new cards, and continuing going through the different phases of the game. Each character has a unique skill set and unique different icons that they're going to be utilizing and how they play with their deck and they all function differently. And the anomalies have different effects that can either help you or hurt you. And there are certain things when you place down anomalies that uh, will give you benefits. Like for instance here, this five, uh, it's also got another icon on the top that says a minus or, or a one down on the alert bar, which means that you're going to get a, a positive benefit for putting that guy down. So instead of this going from seven to eight, it'll actually go down one when putting this anomaly down. So that actually helps us, but it's going to be more of a pain in the butt to deal with. And otherwise, that's pretty much the entirety of the game. Uh, if your deck runs out, you can only draw anomaly cards. And uh, if the anomaly deck runs out and you're at zero and it's the last round, then you win the game. All right, let's go ahead and discuss our review. So Hacktivity has this kind of pandemic feel to it, where the time is running out, there's certain trackers on the board you have to deal with, you have to keep them from going up or going down, you have to make sure that the area where you're going to be placing down the anomalies is not going to be full, because otherwise you'll have to discard anomalies, some of them are much worse than others, and all the while you're going to have to manage what cards you have in your deck, and the amount of cards in the anomaly pool. Sometimes it's best to draw more of these guys or more of these guys depending on where you're at in the game. Now, the decks also function differently as well. For instance, I have Blast here, who does a lot of damage. You can choose the utmost portion of one of his cards uh, to do three damage to a single target and one damage to himself, painful. Or you can choose to increase the alert marker by two, do a damage to one of the monsters, <laughs> and the anomalies, and you can also give plus four on this critical track here. Uh, so a lot of the cards have like a positive or, or negative benefit to them, or, or they actually have just a straight up, po most of the cards in your deck are just straight up positive, but they have potential negatives as well. So if it's a big attack, it'll make you suffer in some way. Uh, this one here is just two damage, or raise the alert by one and give yourself three damage instead to a singular anomaly. Um, cards that let you shuffle back into your deck, cards that are going to give you additional HP or reduce the uh, tracker over there, and so on and so forth. Now Blast is mainly focused on damage, as you might have guessed, but there are other characters that have different functions as well. Uh, Cyberlink, for instance. Cyberlink has a really cool ability. It's going to have this little link chain here that allows you to place up to four cubes onto the different anomalies on the board. And when those anomalies are deactivated, they will do damage based on the number of cubes uh, to a adjacent anomalies that uh, were placed next to them. So it's always good to have an, a couple anomalies out when you use that card and then defeat that anomaly that has those little deactivate, these little activation cubes on them, little link nodes, and do those dam that splash damage to everything. And so she focuses on trying to combo the different anomalies that are currently on the field. Uh, then you have Dr. Power. Dr. Power has his own unique card that's going to give you the ability to do a certain things based on his power. So you can increase his power to then remove these cubes here to then do certain types of damage, whether it be two damage in any, any, any way that you choose, or four damage, or a three, two, and a one, or six damage, and also remove this tracker down, uh, down by two. So he actually focuses mainly on moving up and down his power uh, by spending the points that he gets from his cards, and then he's going to be able to do high high uh, value attacks. And you have these little symbols on here specifically for him that increase his power. So it's really cool actually. It's kind of a unique way of uh, having a character with his own unique board of moving up and down on these tracks here. And then of course Artemis. Artemis is kind of, I would say, a uh, mild damage slash support character. She has a lot of damaging abilities. She has a good amount of heal abilities. Uh, and she focuses primarily on the opposite side of what Blast is going to do here. And the game is really, really simple, straightforward. Once you understand where all the cubes go and what they all do, the gameplay is easy. Drawing cards, playing the cards, 
empty your hand out, rinse and repeat up until one of the negative uh, conditions uh, take effect or the positive one takes effect where the last round there's no cards in the deck and you're below zero on this track and you win. Speaking of which, there's different scenarios in this game. Uh, there's a second scenario. What happens is you're going to be including new cards for not only the bad guy deck, but also for your decks. So they're gonna give you additional cards that are going to help you out. It's gonna change how many cards you're gonna be drawing, the effects of certain cards, even new, new and unique cards are gonna pop into the game. And as a lot of tension. Now this game you're going to be having a lot of tension. It's it's a challenging game. I wouldn't say that it's impossible or it's like super duper hard. Like it might be on the scale of pandemic somewhere in that area, maybe a little less crazy than that as far as succeeding, but I only have the first two scenarios. So I imagine it probably gets a little more challenging and a little more nuanced as the game progresses with the different scenarios that you can kind of include in. Think of it kind of like a scenario driven card game that's cooperative that is all about management, managing all the different types of systems that are currently out, as well as what you have in front of you, which is your own unique system that allows you to play cards face up and face, uh, face up value and the down value. Well, speaking of which, another really cool thing about the game is playing the cards in the discard pile for their up value or their down value. You might think, why is there two different discard piles? What's the point of that? Well, certain cards will allow you to play copies of other cards based on where they're positioned at. You can play a copy of a top card or a bottom card. And you can kind of combo those cards together with the different players available in the game. And you're gonna be working together to do that. Now it's limited information up until the point where a card is played, so you really have to kind of cooperate in a way that's more about knowing what needs to be done and how it's done. And so as you play this game more and more, you're going to get better at it. And you're going to understand the differences. Uh, the first time we played the game, we barely won. And the second time we played, we did pretty well. And I think that just goes to show that the game is all about teaching you as you play to get better for the new scenarios that are going to be incorporated as well as the new rules in the game. Artwork. Artwork in this game, excellent. Really, really cool artwork. Uh, feels like you're in the cyberspace. Uh, even the board itself is really cool. I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna be doing for the actual board, but how they did this is really nice. I like the different see-through mechanics that we've been placing the cards in here and all the cubes, how they fit. It does feel really nice to the theme of the game of kind of like jumping into the cyberverse and attempting to stop these anomalies and protect your threat meter and your crazy super meter, whatever you wanna call it. And then you have your little firewall meter and moving cubes all around the board. Didn't feel like just moving cubes uh, specifically because of the stylization of the different types of boards that are going to be presented with in the game. Quality of the game, excellent. Like the style of the cards, I like the style of the board, really easy. Everything has a place for it and everything in its place and that works great for me. This is a fun cooperative game. This game requires a lot of thinking. You cannot, you can't alpha game this as well, which is really nice. Most times with a cooperative game, I'm not super into them. I like them, but most of them involve alpha gaming, and that's a big issue. Uh, one player just simply plays everybody's turn. You need to play this, and you need to play this, but because you don't know what the other players have in their hands. They can only give you kind of vague references. Now, of course, if they be too extra specific in their vagueness, then you're kind of cheating. So you want to play to where, you know, you're not doing that. But it allows players to play their turn, and then you have to work with what they did based on the limited information that you had and what they played down. And that really works for me. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. I think this game is going to look really, really great when it's done. I think that all the extra scenario is going to bring a lot to it. Just in the second scenario, there's quite a bit, which if you want to learn and more about those scenarios, there'll be a link down below where you can take a look on Kickstarter. For me though, Hacktivity is a solid cooperative game. If you enjoy a little bit of stress, a little bit of management, and you want something that's going to uh, play cooperatively along the table with up to four players. The game definitely plays best at three and four players. It's my suggestion that you play it that way. Negatives to the game. Um, it's challenging, so if you're looking for a game that's gonna be kind of a breeze, a light, and easy game, this might not be for you. That does have a challenge to it. There is a lot of moving parts, and if you can't remember symbols, it might be a challenge for you. Um, that's pretty much it. The game really works really well. Like, mainly it's just about, are you okay with a game that's a little complex, a cooperative game, and that involves some moving bits and pieces? But otherwise, yes, solid. This is gonna get my seal of approval. I had a great time playing from the first play up into the last play, and I actually wanna see the new scenarios too. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Hacktivity Volume 1. If you're interested in this review, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and the bell notification. 
button as well. And if you want, you can go ahead and comment. Uh, go ahead and check out Hacktivity. There's a link in the description that will show you where you can get this game or if it's before Kickstarter, where you can find more information about this game. And of course, you can check out the website unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. It's all done by my writers. And of course, Brian showing you new content of reviews of games that are not the ones that I have here. Uh, every one, no, Sunday. Why always say Wednesday? It's been years since I've done a Wednesday stream. Every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we stream board games just like this one, and maybe even this one, in fact. And you can see us play them for yourself to determine if it's something that would be fun for you based on how the game plays and how other people are feeling around the table, which is a nice uh, way of determining if that's something that's cool or not for you. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to venturing into cyberspace and defeating anomalies with you next time.